And then we're going to get into the meat of the topic, which is mistakes made on alternate day fasting and how to fix them. My mistakes on alternate day fasting and any mistakes you possibly could be making that is hindering your progress, slowing down results and the like. So firstly, and I've gone through this where I've seen a lot of people over fasting. Over fasting is not something that you want to do to make up because you ate too many calories or you missed a day or you you ate two days in a row. Fasting is, especially in alternate day fasting, with all these intermittent fasting patterns, there it's a pattern. So when you start breaking out of the pattern just because you want to compensate in some way or over accommodate some part of like you messed up, it essentially will backfire. Over fasting, if you're fasting, you're either doing it for weight loss or you're doing it for health reasons. When we are fasting for weight loss, we don't have to do it too hard because the calorie deficit given from like a 36 hour period is enough to put you on track to lose at least two pounds a week. And if you don't lose two pounds a week, that's fine. That's fine too. You're not guaranteed. You are not entitled to a pound or two pounds a week. Just continue the process. Then the health side of fasting, where it can go beyond 24 hours, 36 hours, 42 hours, is to clear up inflammation. It is to uh, reverse arthritis. It helps lower blood sugar. It helps with a lot of things. So since the majority of the people who are here are weight loss fasters, there's no need to be fasting for so long. It's not necessary. The body will essentially start holding on to fat because it doesn't know when its next meal is going to come. I find that people are doing too much instead of just sticking to the pattern. Because what the body ultimately does is it becomes accustomed to the pattern. So if you're able to get through the first week, and that's why I say to set your trial time to the first week, if you're able to get through the first week of alternate day fasting, your body will start to expect when it's going to get fed and when it's going to fast. The body is very smart like that. It knows when it can, it can adapt quickly. The body knows how to regulate itself, but it can't regulate itself if you are doing two days feasting, two days fasting, one day feast, half a day fat. It's not going to work. So stay the pattern and don't over fast to accommodate for I ate too much or I had two days of, of fasting or feasting and now I have to make up for it and I want to fit into a dress by Thursday. Just follow the pattern and you will get where you need to go eventually. Number two is not properly refueling on feast days. Not properly refueling on feast days is a setup, okay? If you're not able to get proper nutrition, feed yourself well, and get in the proper macronutrients, if you're filling up on junk food, if you're eating empty, empty calories, you won't be able to get through two days. You will feel dizzy, you'll feel empty, you will not be able to make it through two days of fasting, well, feast and fast. You won't be able to have the amount of energy to make it through two days. So having proper nutrition on your feast days is essential. Some people think it's all about the fast day. It is not all about the fast. When you eat properly on your feast day, it can set you up to have a really good fast day, especially when you're able to maintain stable blood sugar throughout the day. Say you're doing keto. Honestly, I'm not a fan of keto, right? I'm not a fan of diets, period. I know it works for people. I know. But I'm a person that I personally enjoy having all food groups, treating myself to dessert, having cake at a birthday party, going on vacation and not war. I like that. And I feel like it's more sustainable long term having all food groups. So I'm not a fan of diets. But keto and fasting... I will never deny how 
beautifully they go together because if you're fasting and you've regulated your blood sugar to the point where you have no cravings, when you have no cravings, that's how you know your blood sugar is stable. No cravings, nothing that triggered your insulin. So when you're rolling into that 36 hour fast, you're looking to end it and you're having your feast day the next day and you're on a keto diet, you are going to cruise through this challenge like nobody's business because you're maintaining stable blood sugar. So say you're on keto, you have an egg omelet, slices of uh, turkey bacon, For lunch, you have a massive salad with a protein source. For dinner, say you have cauliflower rice and a protein source of your choice with a nice fat, like piece of avocado or a pat of butter, you know, proteins and fats, minimal 20 carbs or less. That's it for keto, right? You will maintain regulated blood sugar throughout the day. You will have no cravings. You will have no want for sugar. And then you will easily go into your next fast day with no problem because there is no spikes. That's what a day on keto looks like. A day in the standard American diet, which we're on if we're having just whatever throughout the day, but we, you know, clean eating, clean eating. Your first meal a day is like a banana. Okay. If we're having a banana, please balance it with protein, but you have a banana that's going to shoot up your insulin. And then what you kind of start your day off with is how your day is going to go. So say you start off your day with more protein, you'll essentially have less cravings than if you started off your day with a muffin. You will have a higher blood sugar And then by the time you get to dinner, say you had a bowl of rice, you had uh, some sushi and dessert, your blood sugar is so high that by the time you're rolling around to the next fast day, your blood sugar is still high. It's still trying to regulate itself. It's still trying to get back into um, an even level. It makes it harder for you to stay the course on fast day because your insulin is just so out of whack. Your blood sugar is just trying to get back down from your previous feast day. All that to say, if you did want to go the easy route and the route that will make you melt pounds, inches, like nobody's business, all right? You heard it from me and I don't like to admit this. Keto is where it's at. If you're able to do keto and alternate day fasting, I am scared of you. I'm scared of who you're going to become. I'm scared of like all the haters are going to hate and the potatoes are going to potate because you're going to look wild good fast, super fast if you wanted the express route. But either way, do your best to cut out empty calories. Empty calories on your feast day will never benefit you. All it'll do is give you calories that you can't utilize for two days worth of energy. That's the day you're eating and the following fast day. Do your best to focus on macronutrients. That's fats, proteins, carbohydrates, preferably complex carbohydrates, carbohydrates that take a long time to break down in the system. That includes brown rice, that includes sweet potatoes, but the ones that just are low on the GI index as far as sugars go, and it takes a while to break down. I never want you to deprive yourself because essentially I want you to learn better eating habits. I want you to learn how to intuitively eat that means eat until you're satisfied. You will never, you will never be satisfied on non-nutritional foods. It, w- it won't happen. There is a difference, and I always note this. There is a difference when you have eggs for breakfast versus a bowl of cereal for breakfast. I, you feel satisfied for hours. You see, and you need to. This is where self-awareness comes in, because self being self-aware is noticing these things. Because the other day, I had an omelet for breakfast. I was full for hours. Three eggs mixed with peppers, onions, and some cheddar. And I was full for hours, all the way until dinner. So be conscious about what you're intaking on your feast days. It will help set you up for success on your fast days. Avoid the mistake of improper eating on your feast days. Because remember as well, we want to make sure we're getting in our vitamins, our minerals, our nutrients. Those are things that you don't want to skimp on because you are essentially eating half of the month. Moving on. This is a big one. This is a big one. 
it's like I could just shake, shake some people sometimes because they are just ruining their own progress because of this reason. Mistake number three, stop overweighing yourself. For the love of Jesus, stop overweighing yourself. I get comments all the time. I started Monday and I weighed myself today. Mind you, it's, it, it'll be like Wednesday. I weighed myself today and I see no difference. Please leave it. I know you're excited, especially if you're new to intermittent fasting. I was the same way. When I started fasting, I remember my first month of fasting so well, alternate day fasting so well. I was just so shocked that I was able to do it. I remember weighing myself the first day. The first day I decided I'm going to change my life. I'm going to finally lose this weight. And I remember weighing myself again, maybe by the end of the week, right? So I, it took a week. Then I weighed myself at the end of the second week. And then I weighed myself at the end of the month, right? Because I think by the second week, I was like, I all this effort and I only lost two pounds. What I need you to know is that healthy weight loss is it comes in small increments. Healthy weight loss comes in small increments increments. What that means is weight loss that is true, weight loss that is deep, weight loss that is long-term comes in small increments. Losing a pound or two a week is beautiful. It is a gift. And if you lose no pounds, if you lose no pounds, know that you are losing inches. And that is the biggest thing when alternate day fasting is that you will lose inches. And that's why I say to leave the scale alone because the scale is not going to tell you if you're on your period. Your scale is not going to tell you if you have water weight, if you peed or had a bowel movement for the day. Your scale is not going to tell you if my wedding ring fits better or my jewelry fits better, went down a notch in my belt. Your scale is never going to tell you these things. You know what your scale is going to tell you? It's going to give you numbers. It's going to give you three numbers. It's going to give you three numbers. But those three numbers mean so much to people. Those three numbers mean so much to people. They could be swimming in their clothes. Their bra could be falling off. Their panties can be baggy. But no, no, that's not enough. I need the scale to tell me I lost 20 pounds or else I'm stopping. Why Why do we, do you know that this mentality is a form of self-sabotage? Overweighing yourself while alternate day fasting is a form of self-sabotage that we have to end. I will never stop quoting what Jen Stevens of Feast Fast Repeat said. Fasting is a health plan. Fasting is a health plan with weight loss as a side effect. If we can absorb this message, we are more likely to stay the track because so many of us have the weight loss mentality. And of course we want weight loss. That's a good majority of the people alternate day fasting are doing it for weight loss. But that's why I, I really push researching how intermittent fasting works, what it does to the body, the benefits, the effects, I really push everyone, research, get books, Jen Stevens, Dr. Fung. Please go to medically licensed professionals, researchers, peer-reviewed journals, because they are going to break down what is happening inside, why this is helping, what it does, because it is a health plan. And if you are healthy, people don't understand that if you are healthy, if you are a healthy soul, you will get to your weight, your intended target weight eventually. Here's the thing. Here's, the, here's how most people shoot themselves in the foot. They want to get there fast. You want to get there fast, right? They want to get there yesterday, now o'clock, by tonight, okay? They want to do it now o'clock. And that's when stepping on the scale becomes a problem because they feel like, okay, I did three days of this shit. All right. I, I better see something on this. You are not entitled to any weight loss. You are not. The sooner we're able to wrap our heads around that concept of in losing entitlement, of 
course we want to see results. Of course we want to get to that goal number. But if we focus on health, if we are able to focus on health, you are gone. You are, I promise you, you are going to get to your destination. What if you get to that number and you're still not the size you thought you would be, the look you thought you would be? What if you're skinny fat? What if you are unfit? What if you're still out of shape and all you cared about was the number? If we could focus on, hey, I would love to be a size eight instead of a size 14. Now we're getting somewhere because that dictates how flat my stomach is getting, how many inches I'm losing, you know, how fit I'm getting because now my legs can slip into those pants. That's a better indicator of progress than three silly ass numbers that will ruin your, it will literally make or break your day seeing the number. And I don't want that for you. It is a mistake that so many people make. I get so many comments on people saying, I haven't lost weight. I haven't lost weight. I haven't lost weight. Although some people will lose weight. Some people may not lose weight, but I don't think they take into account other non-scale victories. Having energy, not being fatigued in the middle of the day. Once again, your things fit better jewelry, pants, clothing, dresses. If you have waist beads, they're able to roll down a pinch. You're starting to see your jawline form, starting to see your cheekbones come out. Clavicles are popping. These are beautiful things. If you just go in the mirror and take a picture every other day, every week, that is more beneficial to you than going on the scale. Because the minute you don't see what you want, you're going to feel defeated. All your, pro- you could have been doing so beautifully for days and days and days, and then you didn't see what you wanted to see. And all of a sudden you are just so discouraged. I don't want that for you. Please avoid that mistake while alternate day fasting. You are more than a number on the scale. You are a beautiful human. You are a loved one. You mean more than data on a device. And what you're doing for yourself is essential for your future. You taking the opportunity to fix your health, to want to change, to even try is a is a step in the right direction because there's people that don't even try. All they do is this. Yeah, one day I'm gonna lose weight. Yeah, one day. Yeah, oh, I was thinking of starting this. I was thinking about doing that. I was thinking, and it's all talk and no action. That's not you. Here you are making an investment in yourself. You are literally investing in yourself to become a better you a more beautiful woman, more confident, more secure. You're able to say yes and say no when you want, not because you have to, because you want to. That is an amazing feeling to feel like you have the world at your fingertips. And a lot of that starts with loving who we are. A lot of that comes from removing excess weight. When I decide, like I I was going down the wrong path, My heaviest was 252 pounds. I think that was the highest, the heaviest I'd ever been in my life. And I was in a relationship I was unhappy with. I was stressed. I had no real income. I had no income because I was jobless at that point. I just moved to a place that I was unfamiliar with. I essentially had no friends. All my family was back in New York. And I just felt sad. My knee and my ankle was becoming inflamed. I had just did the big chop, so I was bald headed. <laughs> and my everything about me was just big and puffy. The time where it feels different is exactly the time when you should move. And that's on anything, whether it's weight loss, whether it's creating the business plan, whether it's signing up for classes in school, whether it's taking the plunge on that hobby, whether it's signing up for the dating app. If it feels right, if it feels different than before, that just might be the time where you should pull the trigger and try. Just, I hate the word try because it's either do or don't for me, but taking the step forward is always best. Like what's what's the worst that can happen? It's like a lot of people are like, well, what if I fail? But my dear, what if you succeed? What if you, what if you fly? What if you take off? Beyond the clouds. I don't know why that's emotional for me. There are women 
that just have so much potential. And my goal, I, I don't know why I took this on myself, but I want to speak life into you because I know how it felt to feel unloved, to feel unworthy, to feel undeserving. And I'm not just a proponent for black women. Like I love women, period. I feel like women are a gift. They are essential to society and being treated any less than is unacceptable in my eyes. You are a gift and you should always give yourself a chance to be your best, to try and elevate, be better than the last generation, inspire the upcoming generation. My goal is to be a role model for my sons and be a feminine, achieving woman in their eyes. I didn't feel like that, overweight. And you'll be surprised at how, when you're overweight, there's just a different mindset. When you have a different mentality, when you're heavily overweight, you feel unlovable. And that feeling of being unlovable, it can ruin you because you just treat yourself like trash. I treated myself like trash. I ate what I wanted with no care. I drank. I self-medicated. I used to smoke weed almost every day. Do you know that? Just to escape my reality. My kids didn't deserve that, mom. My family didn't deserve that, Colleen. I didn't deserve, like, why was I doing that to myself? And that's why it's just give yourself the chance. And it doesn't matter if it's alternate day fasting. I am a proponent for alternate day fasting because it changed my life. I didn't know it would, but here I am talking to you about it. But however you decide to finally get to the you you want and deserve to be, I don't care. Just do it. Take the steps. The steps are all you need because one step after the other, it'll essentially eventually get you to your destination. And on that note, let's move on to the last Last mistake we're making. <laughs> I don't know that last, that sentence, what if you fly? It's just like saying it for some reason. It's just, it's such a beautiful sentence because I'm a very visual person. When I speak, I see images and just the thought of women exceeding, ex excelling. It's just, it brings joy to my heart. You have no idea. I say this one for last a mistake a lot of people are, are making is not knowing your why. When we start anything that could potentially be life-changing, such as a weight loss journey, I know some people are like, you know, just losing 10 or 15 or 20 pounds, but then there's people who are really losing major weight. And when you lose major weight, it is life-changing. So when you, when you decide to do something life changing, like losing 50 plus pounds. There has to be a rock solid foundation as to why you're even doing this. And ultimately, a lot of people don't know why they're doing this. They're just like, I, I just, I want to look good. My pants don't fit. Um, you know, it seems easy. And no, you need to solidify the why. The why is your basis to success. Because anytime you do something, this video is going to be motivation. This video is going to be motivation, right? Motivation is fleeting. It doesn't stay forever. And this is where discipline sets in. But you can only discipline yourself if you keep remembering the why. Why are you doing this? I want you to tell me in the comments, what is your why? And don't be ashamed of what the why is. You have to be solidified in your why. It will carry you through your journey. When you're alternate day fasting, it is so easy to give up. It's so easy to just be like, F this. I'm going to eat. I want a banana. And that's how you know you're alternate day fasting. Like, I just want a kiwi. <laughs> When you crave healthy stuff, that's how you know you're fasting. But there's going to be times where you just want to throw it all away because it's like, is this even necessary? You have to ask yourself that. Why did you even start? Why did you even start? What is the reason? My why has always been, my personal why, is there's diabetes that runs on both sides of my family. My mom currently has diabetes. My father died from complications of diabetes when he was 49. I always told myself, 
diabetes is never my future. No, I don't want the chronic illness. I don't want any chronic illnesses in my life. And that was my why. It could be deep wise. It could be shallow wise. A shallow why would be like, I really want to look good for my upcoming vacation in the summer. A shallow why could be like, he thought he you know, he was hurting me, but now I'm back and better than ever. You know, your why is your why, but what it needs to be is strong. And a lot of people just jump into a lifestyle such as alternate day fasting, thinking it's easy, thinking it's nothing. It's always easy when you're not fasting, but on the fasting day, it's like, you are stressed. You are on stress o'clock. I know. I've, I've done it for months and months and months and months and months and months. <laughs> but what also propelled me, once you have that solid why to get you into the pattern of alternate day fasting, to get you used to that empty hunger feeling, it's a feeling you're not truly hungry, I promise. Once you get through all of that, you know what's going to motivate you now? The results. Once you start seeing the results of your efforts, <sighs> Fast day gets a little easier, but you have to give yourself a chance and the chance comes through the why. What I say, what I dictate is to give yourself a solid week to dedicate to proper, true, alternate day fasting. And that's what I did when I started in April, 2021. Everybody's going to remember that date. (laughs) April, 2021. I was like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I had a plan. I had a plan. I'm going to dedicate myself to perfect alternate day fasting for one week, seven days, seven days, right? What this did was mentally prepare me for a very short deadline, but something long enough to be effective should anything come of it. Cause I was used to starting programs and failing. Let me know if you can relate. I was used to starting plans and programs and failing. So I said, all right. I was almost like I was waiting for my failure. I said, all right, I'll give myself seven days. This ain't gonna work. You know, like all the other millions of things I've done. Day one was another mindset change, right? I said, okay, Colleen, get through day one. So now I knew the long-term plan was to do seven days. The short-term plan was to complete day one. You see how I had a plan for myself? I didn't, because if I think too far into the future, I'm not focusing on the present. Overall, you want to have a long-term plan and a short-term plan because you're not going to alternate day fast forever. I, When I thought about my short-term plan, I was like, okay, day one, I'm going to mentally prepare myself to not eat for an entire day, which I had never done in my life. And it seemed daunting, but I had skipped breakfast before I'd skipped lunch before. How bad would dinner be? When you're able to take the time to do a trial, it's easier than thinking about a month in advance. If you can think about the present, the future won't seem too bad. And that's what I did to start alternate day fasting. So I took my why and I thought about that day. Focus on the day, Colleen, you can get through the day. And I got through the day. And then the next day I ate. Day two of fasting, focus on this day. Focus on the day. It is not easy. It is not easy to focus on the day. But eventually, my body started becoming accustomed by fast day three. I was like, oh, okay, this isn't as hard as it was on day two or day one. By day seven, I jumped on the scale. I had lost five pounds and I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, the results. So the results will keep you going. The why started me and the results kept me going into week two, week three, month one. By the time month one was over, I had lost 12 pounds. And I need you to know, back to the overweight, well, overweighing yourself, that 12 pounds is more than appropriate. I need you to be aware of any videos, any people, any car salesmen, any snake oil salesmen, about 20 pounds in two weeks. It's not good. Eight months, I lost over 60 pounds. And from there, I was just adding a fast day here, there, everywhere. But if you just keep going, 
you'll get there. I could have lost more pounds in a shorter time frame if I was truly, truly, truly alternate day fasting. But I start to like who I was, what was, what I was looking like. I wanted to add weight training. I just had things I wanted to do now that I was enjoying how my body was looking. So please, it's important to know why you're doing this. Get on track, start mentally preparing for the day. Don't look too far into the future. Mentally prepare for that day and then let the results fuel you because I tell you, there is nothing like seeing and feeling results, honey. So those were the mistakes I wanted to talk about. Those were some of my mistakes and I wanted to share my experience with you to make it a little easier on your fast days. I would love if you refer back to these videos, my playlist on your way out. Feel free to click the like button if you enjoyed. Thank you so much for stopping by. Love you guys. Bye.